The next day, when Anya is watching anime, Yo arrives home. But for some reason, she has a pissed look. Lloyd is worried and asks if she is not feeling well. But Yo assures that everything is fine. Yo can't tell Lloyd the real reason, because today during her real job, a member of the Red Circus gang caught her off guard and shot her. He didn't hit any vital areas, however the bullet ends up hitting Yo's butt. She has treated the injury, but the pain is incredible. Anya hears it, and now she is worried for her mother. Yor heads to her room hoping the pain will be reduced by the next day. On the other side, Lloyd is in a panic. It's his first time witnessing Yor's bad mood. He wonders if he did something to make her upset. He doesn't do anything now and hopes Yor's mood will be better by tomorrow morning. However, even by the next morning, the situation is still the same. Lloyd must do something. It's a day off, so he invites Yor on a date as a way to show his gratitude for taking care of Anya. Yor is in a worry. Because of the pain, she doesn't want to go. But a few days ago in her workplace, when asked about a date with Lloyd, she was clueless about it and couldn't answer. So she believes this is a nice way to gain experience. So she accepts the invitation and goes to change her outfit. Anya is also excited and wants to go. But Lloyd tells her, that's not how date works. So after getting ready, Frank is assigned as a babysitter. He is furious at Lloyd for making him do such things, but after Lloyd gives him a check, Frank calms down. And with it, the date begins. Lloyd brainstormed a total of 862 dating courses to make you happy. But to his surprise, you refuses to get in the car and insists on walking. Lloyd is devastated because now out of 862, there are only 68 courses valid. As they both leave, Anya is worrying about her parents. She wants to follow them and requests Frank uncle to let her. Frank finds it interesting and decides to follow them. Knowing how sharp Lloyd is, they decide to pull off a disguise. But Lloyd has already realized who they are. He believes it's some kind of Anya spy game. She is with Frank so he is relieved for her safety. The first place for the date is the Central Mall. Lloyd recommends trying a pant. But Yor refuses. Because if she wears such a tight pant, the pain will only increase. From there, they go to watch a movie. But there, Yor watches it while standing. Similarly in orchestra and while boating, Yor refuses to do things that will hurt her but... Lloyd is freaking out to see his plans are totally going to waste. By the time it's night, the only thing left in his plan is dinner in a fancy restaurant. There, Yur pretends to sit. Frank and Anya try entering, however only adults are allowed. Sad Anya is about to leave when she hears someone saying her mother's assassin name. Inside the restaurant, there's a waiter who survived yesterday's incident. He managed to escape and decided to work a clean job to live with his girlfriend Catherine. But now... On seeing the Thorn Princess in front of him, he believes it's God's way of telling him to avenge his fallen comrades. Anya is in worry. She knows her mother can easily beat the bad guy, but today her father is also there. So she wants to help her. As an excuse to play her spy game, with Frank she infiltrates the restaurant. Inside, the waiter squeezes all of Blow's fish blood into the glass. Blowfish is incredibly lethal, so with it, he plans to take down Yor. As Yor drinks it, Anya internally screams in panic, and the waiter is happy. However, instead of dying, the pain in Yor's but just vanishes. It's because Yor is immune to poison, so the blowfish blood actually acted as a pain relief. Now that Yor is back to normal, Lloyd is glad. However, the waiter hasn't given up. He decides to make a DIY bomb. But on his way, he ends up falling due to the oil spilled in the hallway. As he enters the room, a bucket falls on his head. He picks up the bottle, and it begins to inflate and explodes. It was a peanut bomb. Just then, Anya makes her entry. While pointing the gun at him, she says, Member of Red Circus, if you regret your actions, don't ever do any bad things. From now on, you should work hard and give happiness to Catherine. The waiter is speechless to know she knows even about his girlfriend. He realizes he was never suited for these things and decides to live a normal life. 
After a lovely dinner, Yor and Lloyd walk home. Yor expresses how much fun she had, and that she would like to go on another date. Lloyd is happy to hear it. The next day, Anya yet again gets bad marks. She doesn't want to get scolded so she goes inside her room. Lloyd isn't mad, because he can see improvement in it. And in her ancient language, Anya has done really well. If there were no spelling errors, she would have gotten great marks. He doesn't recall focusing on this subject too much, so he is proud to see Anya put effort into studying it. As a reward, he decides to make a hamburger for her. The following day, Lloyd meets up with Frank regarding a submission. There, Frank further shares that one of his contacts was caught. And it's rumored that the garden is behind them. The garden is a group of assassins who work from the shadows for the government and get rid of the traitors. A single assassin can overpower a squad of dozens of well-trained soldiers. Lloyd believes they are just urban legends, so he doesn't give much thought and leaves. In the city hall, Yor's image around her colleagues has improved. As she is now much more like a normal human with emotions, unlike a robot she used to be. Just then, her manager comes and tells Yor about a call for her. Yor goes and picks it up. It's a job for the Thorn Princess. From there, Yor goes to a mansion where her boss is. His real name is not disclosed but everyone calls him the shopkeeper. Yor like always is mesmerized by the beautiful flowers. Suddenly, the shopkeeper attacks her, but Yor dodges it. The shopkeeper is relieved to see even after becoming a mother, Yor's skills are still as sharp as ever. He then proceeds to explain the job. Gret your family, for generations have managed Ostania's underworld. However, a little while ago, the boss along with his two sons were killed due to infighting. The only one that has survived is Alka Gretcher and her son. Currently, she is in a safe house, but the man who has taken over the organization, Leonardo Hapun is finding her and has put an insane amount of bounty over her head. As a result, every hitman from every corner of this country has become active. The shopkeeper owed a debt of gratitude to the boss, and so in order to repay the debt, he wants Alka and her son to safely move to another country. The mode of transportation is through water, in a normal passenger ship to avoid any suspicions. After reaching a particular point, she will transport it via a foreign yacht. In all of this, Yor's job is to stay next to her and make sure she is safely handed over. However, Yor is worried about her city hall job and what excuse to make to her family if she is gone for several days. The shopkeeper assures her he has made sure it will look like a part of her job as a civil servant. And her manager will make sure it will go smoothly. Yor understands and promises to give her best. On her way, she meets Yuri. She invites him home, but he declines due to having work. Being his elder sister, she worries about Yuri and asks if he's eating proper meals. Yuri assures her that he is. After all, he's a grown-up. After Yuri arrives at his station, Yo wonders if there's any reason for her to continue her job as an assassin now that Yuri has settled. The scene shifts to the Central Mall, where a lottery has been organized, with the first prize being two tickets to a cruise trip for three days and two nights. Anya sets her eyes on it and wants to go on an adventure. She takes money from her father and stands in line. But she soon hears that the staff is actually fooling people. He has made sure the prize ticket is stuck to the top so that only her wife wins the prize. When it's Anya's turn, she takes it out, leaving the staff in complete shock. At home, when Yor arrives, Anya shares about winning the cruise trip. Since it's two tickets, Lloyd insists Yor to go with Anya. Yor reads the ship's name, and it's the same as the one she has to go, and surprisingly, it's on the same day as well. Yor shares that the city is trying to attract a famous department store, so she is going to entertain someone very important from there. But Anya hears her mother's real reason behind going. Knowing her mother will have difficulty doing her job if she and her father comes, Anya is in deep thought. Her angel side doesn't want to trouble her mother, and her devil side wants to chill on a big boat. In the end, the angel side is also convinced that they should go on a trip and help her mother with the job so it will be a win-win situation. So tomorrow, Lloyd goes to ask Sylvia for a few days off. Opposite to his expectation, 
Sylvia allows him. She believes it's also an important part of the mission to make sure Anya is happy. So she tells him to treat it like a vacation and spend time with Anya. On Friday, the Forger family heads to the cruise. Looking at Anya's smile, Yo wonders if this could be her final job as an assassin so that later she can enjoy such trips as a family. But then she scolds herself for thinking such things, after all, this is just a pretend family. Soon after they arrive, Anya is bursting out with excitement. Your part ways and meets up with her manager and colleagues who are normal City Hall employees. As Princess Lorelai departs, Anya is excited to see so many fun things. But as she arrives at her room, she is devastated because it's not a fancy room. Lloyd tells her this is all you can get from a lottery ticket. Soon Anya regains her mood and decides to sleep on the upper bed. Somewhere in a luxury suite room, Yor is introduced to Alka and her husband Fur Seal Grey. After meeting the client, the city hall employees suggest a tour of the cruise. Grey agrees, but Alka decides to stay in the room. So Yor also stays. They both have a talk from which we get to know the person playing as Alka's husband and the businessman is actually a member named Zeb, who used to work in the Gretcher organization. Alka's husband was killed along with the rest of her family. So now, it's only her son that is left. Alka shares that it's not like she wasn't prepared for such things as a daughter of a mafia, but now she is tired and wants to live a peaceful life. Since her family was killed, Alka has been hiding nonstop, so she asks Yur if they can have some fresh air. At first, Yur is hesitant, but soon she agrees. She looks around to see if Lloyd and Anya aren't nearby. Knowing they are in third class, Alka assures Yor they wouldn't meet them unless it's the common area. But still as a solution, Alka helps Yor in changing her getup, so now it's like two friends are hanging out. Yor promises to do her best to protect her and her son. Alka shares his name is Graham, just like his father's. As they are having a normal time, throughout the ship multiple listening devices have been laid out. A person in a room is hearing every conversation. And the moment he hears Graham's name, he also learns Alka's disguise name and finds out the room number she is staying in. On the other side, Lloyd's inner spy comes out. Knowing this ship has celebrities, he knows it's a right place for a terrorist attack. He decides to check for suspicious people and confirm the layout of the ship. But after remembering why he has come here, he scolds himself and decides to take it easy so Anya can have a fun time. It's night and the city hall workers are introducing Zeb to their city's cuisine. After dinner, while Yor and Alka return to their room, Zeb and others go to have a drink. On the way, a man is keeping an eye on them. The manager excuses himself and using the opportunity, stealthily gets hold of the person following them. He interrogates him by asking if he is sent by Leonardo and the number of hitmen on this ship. If he doesn't answer or takes more than two seconds to answer, the manager breaks his bone. From him, the manager gets to know just like him there are multiple assassins on the ship, and also Alka's room number has been leaked. After killing him and disposing of his body, the manager takes away Zeb and tells him about the infiltration of multiple assassins. Information leak isn't possible. So he asks Zeb if he knows anything. Zeb shares that a few days ago he had a call to his parents. He promises he didn't disclose anything as he was just saying his last goodbye in case this was his last mission. The manager doesn't have time to think about how they get the info, so for now, they are heading to Alka's room. In the room, someone knocks on the door. Yor goes to check and sees it's the room's service. But when Alka says she didn't call, Yor quickly gets away from the door and defends Alka. As the hitman tries to enter, the manager comes in time. And when he is distracted, Yor takes him down, Afterwards, Yor is filled in on the situation and with others are told to change their room immediately. The helper using the listening device informs another hitman about Alka with four other people including the baby. It's likely that one of them is an assassin from the garden, so knowing how strong they are, one of the hitmen suggests forming an alliance and dividing the reward equally. On the way, Yor with others are using a mask to hide their identities. There is a masquerade dance being held at the second lounge so this way they can mix in and easily get to their room. But currently, 
Yor also knows there is someone tailing them since they left the room. So she suggests splitting up for a brief moment in the dance, and then gather. But as Yor arrives, she senses a bloodlust. She swiftly takes a button from Zeb and as the hitman reveals his location, she instantly takes him down. Another hitman named Andre is notified about the appearance of the targets. So as he approaches them, Yor grabs his hands and proposes to have a dance. Andre isn't able to overpower Yor and soon is taken down. Currently at deck 4, even though Lloyd has come in on this small trip to relax with Anya, however, his spy instincts just never stop. He has already spotted a dozen of listening devices and a bunch of suspicious people. His plan is not to interfere with them and leave them alone without causing any unnecessary scene. Anya sees a keychain and now she wants it, but Lloyd refuses to buy it. As her father, he is in deep thought. He doesn't want to spoil Anya by giving her everything she wants, but if he doesn't buy it, the people nearby will get suspicious and report him. Hearing how worried her father is, Anya gives up on the keychain. But she then hears a person planning to get rid of a woman and her child along with the woman guard. Anya realizes he is talking about her mother. As Yor and others are coming from the front, Anya can't risk letting them fight, or else her father will suspect she is an assassin and the Forger family will be game over. After a deep thought, Lloyd finally buys the keychain, but Anya freaks out and tells him to stay away. Lloyd is devastated. He doesn't know if Anya is angry or disgusted. He knows taking care is an important mission so he has to make sure he improves Anya's mood. Anya comes up with a plan to engage her father and tells him to wear and try multiple dresses. This way the trip will be exciting for Anya and she will be happy. Lloyd understands the mission and goes into the fitting room to try every single clothes from this store. In just a few seconds he is already done testing all the clothes. However, he doesn't know what kind of combination would make Anya happy, so he tries all possible combinations. On the other side, the hitman passes by and suddenly attacks them. Yor is amazed to see she didn't detect any bloodlust until he attacked. She realizes he is strong. As the fight begins, Yor begins to worry because the people nearby start noticing and wondering what is going on. But Anya comes to the rescue. She starts clapping and says the circus lady is giving a great performance. The others misinterpret it as a circus and start clapping as well. However, Yor is barely avoiding the attacks, and for some reason she is hesitant to approach the hitman. It's not like they both have equal strength, it's that she is hesitant to get an injury that she can hide from Lloyd. But soon, she regains her composure and swiftly takes him down. After wrapping up here, on the other side Lloyd is also done. He comes out with his new attire, and it's very unique. Anya finds it lame and tells him to drop it. On the way, Anya is at her limit, so Lloyd just carries her and goes to their room. Yor and others also arrive at their new room. Their Zeb is freaking out after barely escaping his death. Alka asks him why he even came then if he is so scared. Zeb blushingly says it because of her, but then corrects himself that he is grateful to her and Gretcher's family. When he and his family had a hard time after the war, they were saved by Alka and Gretcher's family. He still remembers the taste of the bread she gave him and wants to repay the debt. But as someone knocks on the door, he gets scared. It's the manager. He scolds Yor for forgetting about their knocking signal after she carelessly got close to the door in the previous room. For the night, while Alka and Graham rest, Yor will guard the door and the manager will try his best to take down as many enemies as possible. Before leaving, he tells Yor to focus on the mission or everyone will lose their life. As hours pass by, while everyone is asleep, Yor is awake doing her duty. She realizes that because of her hesitation, she might have failed this mission. But then she wonders why she is so scared of losing this family if it's just a pretend one. The scene shifts to the next day. As the sun begins to rise, Lloyd is awake. Being the top spy of Westalis, he has mastered every skill there is, as well as completed numerous dangerous missions but he is starting to realize he has overestimated his skill. Because now, he is having a hard time understanding his daughter. Today, he will make sure to live up to Anya's expectations. 
A few hours later, the manager informs the city hall employees that their business deal is cancelled, and they are free to do whatever they want. On the other side, Anya is fully recharged and today she wants to make sure she finds her mother and helps her in her job. But to pull it off, she needs to make sure her father is engaged with something else. She comes up with a plan and suggests playing golf. Like a genius, Lloyd gets a hole-in-one on every hole, and now it's Anya's turn. But for her, it's difficult, and she ends up wasting a lot of time. After lunch, she takes Lloyd to the library hoping to have him hooked on the books. But Lloyd has already read every available book there is. And in the end, it's Anya who ends up getting distracted. By the time it's dinner, she is really pissed for not being able to help her mother. Looking at her face, Lloyd wonders what's wrong. He tried his best to do everything that Anya wanted, but even now her mood is off. Anya realizes she has been causing trouble to her father. She tells him she is enjoying her time with him, but she is missing her mother and also wants her to spend time with him. Lloyd finally understands what's the matter. He tells her there is going to be a firework in which they might meet Yor. On the other side, Yor receives information from the manager that the rendezvous ship is ready and in four hours it will arrive here. And for now, they have to change their location as well as their appearance. So after changing it, Yor with others heads to the rear side of the ship from where they will carry out the rendezvous plan. However, a hitman easily figures out Yor and others by the cologne they are wearing. Because yesterday, he went to their previous room and using his great sense of smell he sniffed out their cologne. On the other side, Lloyd and Anya are searching for Yor, but they are having difficulty finding her. Back inside the ship, the hitmen are all over the place, and with caution, Yor safely brings Alka to the rear side. Soon the fireworks begin. Yor carries Alka and quickly gets on the roof. As they are walking, a sniper shoots. Yor successfully dodges and finds the sniper's location. But another hitman appears and starts attacking. Yor blocks the attack, however, soon she is surrounded by multiple hitmen. As Yor prepares for combat, the sniper again tries to shoot, but thankfully, he is taken down by the manager. While he gives cover, Alka and Zeb tries to hide. However, a hitman manages to shoot. Zeb takes the hit and successfully gets under. Luckily, he had the vest so he is alive. Now, with Alka in safety, Yor and the manager start taking down the hitmen. One by one, Yor get rid of the hitmen, and the manager cleans up the mess and disposes the bodies. Even though they are professional hitmen, against two assassins from the garden, it's difficult to beat them. While Anya is enjoying the fireworks, Yor encounter various type of hitmen specializing in different martial arts. She is being poisoned, electrocuted, and punched, but her strength is just too much against them. As the fireworks are finished, Yor is almost done eliminating the hitmen. The glass guy is amazed and thanks Yor for helping him in increasing his share. As the manager aims at the glass guy, another hitman with blonde hair appears and takes down the manager. Using his katana he throws away Yor's weapon and attacks her. Yor admits he is on a whole different level than others. She starts to remember what the manager told her in case she got an unsealable scar or died in action. Her family would be told that she had been located somewhere else. Yor doesn't want to leave Lloyd and Anya so randomly as it will make her a cruel woman. As the fight continues, the hitman proposes Yor to join them and he'll let her share the reward. After all, they are both assassins who kill people for money. Yor refuses, because what she is doing is to support her family. But then she asks herself if there is any need to do it anymore. Because she got distracted, she misses a step and the blonde guy lands a solid hit on her face. As he approaches to kill her, Yor starts to remember about Lloyd, Anya and Yuri. She asks herself why in the first place she is still killing people when Yuri is financially stable and her city hall work is enough. It's not far from the truth that Yor didn't choose this profession because of money. She wanted to help Yuri get a proper education, so unlike her, he doesn't have to make sacrifices. But more than that, she wanted to help in creating a world where peace can exist. Even if she has to lose her current family, she has to get rid of bad people. And she knows out of all people, Lloyd will accept her for who she is. 
As the blonde guy attacks, Yur tries to dodge but ends up getting a cut on her chest. But with her resolve being concrete, she lands a brutal kick on the blonde guy. As the fight continues, Yur is trying her best to counter the hitman with her bare hands. On the other side, the fireworks are done, and Anya realizes she forgot about her mother. She begins to panic and starts looking around. Just then, Lloyd notices two people from the secret police seem to be in a panic. He reads their lips and is in shock to know there is a bomb planted in this ship. He cannot leave Anya alone, so he starts to wonder if he should just let the secret police handle this matter. Anya understands the situation they are in, so she insists her father that she wants to play in the kid's room. Lloyd finds it convenient. While he keeps her there, he decides to focus on disarming the bomb. Somewhere on the ship, secret police are in a panic to see the bomb. Just then, Lloyd disguising as the captain comes and tells them he has been informed about the situation. As a retired marine battalion, he is trained to disarm the bombs. The secret police have a relief. Lloyd gives a proper look and finds out that the bomb is set up in a way that Westalis extremists love to use. He concludes the terrorists might be planning to take down this ship filled with VIPs so they can blame it on Westalis. While he takes care of the bomb, on the other side, Anya finds a chance and escapes from the room. On her way, she comes across a man who is leaving the ship after planting multiple bombs. He is the helper who was helping other hitmen. After knowing her mother's location from the helper, Anya goes to the ship's bow. Upon arriving she finds her mother's weapon and hears her voice. Anya understands her mother is having difficulty because she doesn't have her weapon. So to help her, she throws the weapon. Just then, two people come. They are trying to use this chaos and get rid of Alka and her son. However, one of the guys steps on the weapon and ends up getting rid of each other. Anya is glad everything happened just like she planned. Yor notices her weapon and gets it. As the blonde guy gets in his stance to unleash his powerful attack, Yor also rushes with her full strength. The glass guy is about to shoot, but the manager takes care of him. And with a swift attack, Yor eliminates the hitman. On the other side, Lloyd disarms the bomb. However, he is still suspicious. If the terrorists are planning to take down the ship, then a single bomb of this type wouldn't be enough. He alerts everyone to search for other bombs as well. As they begin to search, Anya on her way once again comes across a bad guy. She reads his mind and gets to know he is the one who was trying to kill her mother. The hitman smells a bomb planted inside a clock. He is too surprised that he wasn't notified about it. Anya hears it. As a crew member is searching for the bomb, Anya approaches him and tells him a shady person was doing shady things over the clock. The crew member at first thought a kid is just playing with him, but he still decides to check just in case. Outside, the hitman comes into the boat and confronts the helper. Both of them point weapons at each other. Back on the ship, Lloyd has disarmed almost every bomb. He is then called up in the eighth deck to disarm another bomb. Lloyd arrives there and realizes he doesn't have enough time to disarm it. He pulls out the whole thing and throws it into the ocean. The bomb explodes right over the hitman and the helper. Everyone believes it was another firework so they don't give it much thought. Anya is glad that she was able to save everyone, but the kid's room teacher finds her and takes her back to the room. On the other side, finally, Alka is ready to leave. As your wishes Alka the best for her future. Alka hugs her and thanks her for everything. Graham also hugs. Yor is happy that she was able to protect this family. After sending them away, the manager tells Yor about her husband wanting to meet her tomorrow on the island they are heading to. He will take care of any remaining hitmen and as a reward he wants her to spend the day with her family. On the other side, Lloyd arrives at the kids' room and finds Anya sleeping. He scolds himself for yet again leaving Anya to herself. The next day, as the sun starts to rise, Anya tumbles off her bed, but Lloyd is there to catch her. Anya wakes up and is excited to see the island is soon going to arrive. And on the other side, Yur is also ready to reunite with her family. Princess Lorelai arrives at the island, and soon Anya and Lloyd meet up with Yur. Lloyd is quick to notice that Yur's face is swollen. Yur lies that the couple she was attending ended up having a violent argument. 
and when she tried to stop them she got hit. Lloyd asks about the deal. And Yor tells him, she tried her best but in the end, the deal fell through. But she is happy with the effort she put and for today she'll focus on enjoying. As they begin the day, the Forger family ride horses, explore caves and build sand castles. After riding a bike, for the next thing, Anya wants to do snorkeling and look at colorful fishes. But Yor begins to worry because then she would have to wear a swimsuit and the scar on her chest will be exposed. But on seeing they have to wear different swimsuits, she agrees and the Forger family enjoys their time undersea. After this, Anya goes surfing. However, Yor ends up using too much of her strength and sends Anya flying. But luckily, Lloyd is here for the rescue. After having so much fun, Anya is very happy. Suddenly, Yor starts to feel sleepy and falls over Lloyd's shoulder. After Anya also sleeps, Lloyd carries both of them and heads to the ship. Seeing how despite so much exhaustion she made sure to have fun with Anya, he is grateful to Yor. In the evening the ship departs, and by the next day, the Forger family arrive at their home. The next day, Lloyd meets up with Sylvia and gets to know that on the cruise ship, many passengers who were using fake IDs went missing. Apparently, the Secret Service believes their disappearance is related to the planting of bombs, and a third country was involved. So for now the incident hasn't been made public. But that also means they too have to make sure extremists from Westalis don't cause any problems. After this, Sylvia asks Lloyd about his vacation, and if Anya was happy. Lloyd just says, it was more exhausting than his actual missions. At the hospital, since Fiona lost to Yor, she has been working hard on her missions as well as personal strength. While Lloyd was gone for these past few days, she also did his submissions as well, hoping to win the title of his wife. But she knows even after all this, it's not enough to beat Yor. Earlier in the day, Lloyd was also told about the hard work Fiona did while he was gone. So as a thanks, he gives her some souvenirs. Fiona takes it, but because of her look, Lloyd freaks out. As she takes her leave, Fiona is bursting out with happiness. On the other side, Yor returns to her workplace as well. She has brought souvenirs for her colleagues. They are skeletons keychains that Anya helped her in choosing. The scene shifts to the school, Anya arrives. For some reason, she is very confident and shares that she went to the ocean in a luxury cruise ship and had an epic adventure. On thinking how everyone would react, Anya can't stop laughing. However, Becky isn't surprised. Anya tries to emphasize it was very huge, something called Princess Lalala. La. Becky realizes Anya is talking about Princess Lorelei and shares she went on it when she was younger. She booked an imperial suit, however, the furnishing was very bad. Unknowing Anya stayed in the third class, Yuen and Emil start laughing at her. As they start to brag about what they did on their vacation, Becky interrupts them and tells them it's nothing compared to what she did. At her request, her father organized a party and invited Rachel who is the actress from the highest grossing movie, Berlint in Love. Everyone in the class finds it amazing and asks how she was in person. Anya is losing her attention so she ends up revealing there were a hundred bad guys on the ship, who came from all over this country. The students ask then why don't no one showed it on the news. Anya tells them they were bad guys, the government didn't want it to reveal. As everyone starts to lose interest, Anya lies that there were bad guys who could teleport and command an elephant to attack. She was like a hero who helped in defeating them. The students start laughing at her and ask Becky to tell them about the actress. After school, on the way home, Becky comforts Anya. The scene shifts to home. Today Yuri will be coming, so Lloyd came earlier and prepared the house. Now that he knows he is from the secret police, he can't let his guard down even for a second. After some time, Yuri arrives, and soon after Anya as well. While everyone is sitting, with a depressed face she shares how she tried to act cool and was laughed at. Lloyd asks her why she lied then. Obviously, Anya can't say she was trying to impress Damien for the sake of Operation Strix. So she says she wanted to stand out. Lloyd tells her lying is not good. Yuri also tells her only those who are trash tell lies. Yor also adds and says you should be true to yourself whenever you can. 
After this, for a few seconds there was a complete silence in the room. If you enjoyed the recap, please consider liking and subscribing this channel. Have a wonderful day ahead.